greetings from uh, Diego Garcia. So it's been quite a while since uh, I did a tying video, but I wanted to do this one because I've kind of come across or developed a uh, bonefish fly that I find quite effective out here on the Indian Ocean bonefish, and I want to share it. Um, it's not revolutionary, but uh, just different uh, compilation of materials that I find uh, works really well out here. So here's the fly we're going to look at tying today. I call it a jalopy, and uh, it's a cross. I mean, it's a gotcha slash you name it, whatever. Uh, but it's got bits and pieces and parts, and it's, I think, the color and uh, materials that uh, just seem to make it work so well. So uh, hooks, my new uh, favorite bonefish fly is the uh, Umqua XS506. This is a uh, <clears throat> 60 degree jig eye hook, has a, a heavy wire, a micro barb they call it. New absolute favorite uh, bone fly hook. Um, this is a size two, so I tie this a little bit bigger for ocean side, um, which is where this fly is designed for. It's the fish in the surf, uh, fish coming up on the reef at the uh, incoming tide. And uh, they're very, uh, aggressive in chasing down prey and things are very dynamic this is not um, uh, it's, it's spot and cast but um, you're literally hoping to get the fish or the fly in the vicinity of the fish they're constantly moving in and out back and forth uh, catching the currents as the tide comes in so it's a heavy fly and I want it to be big and bold and uh, have them hunt it down and chase it so using, uh, this is a dark gray. Uh, I tie them with red, but I also tie, uh, I find it more effective when it doesn't have a hot spot on the head. So this is a dark gray UTC 140. I'm gonna lay a thread base and I start at the eye and I work it up that 60 degree shank because we're gonna tie our materials onto that at some point. I wanna have a good thread base there. So get that laid in. I tie the eye fairly far forward because I'm not tying any material uh, ahead of the eye on the horizontal part of the hook. I'm tying everything on the 60 degree shank. So three, get them cinched down. Everybody's got their own way to do this. I usually do six cross wraps with more wraps tightening it down and I can hardly move that. So. The tail on this fly is uh, silly legs, or, uh, orange and black barred. So I guess it's orange with black bars and orange flecks in it. Uh, so silly legs, one strand, tied in right behind the eye. I just realized that the reason I'm having a hard time is I'm tying without my glasses on. Um, and I'm tying this in on purpose, but first, I know somebody out there is saying just to uh, catch it and loop it on, but I do this on purpose. Get my catch wrap to work there. There we go. So I get it caught, and then I'm splaying these out, and I'm tying it up the length of the shank, because I want them tied on the side of the hook. And come back. Now I'm going to take two pieces of copper flash, just two pieces, um, I personally find I try not to put too much flash in my bonefish here, uh, I know some people really put a lot in them, um, but this fly I find works better, less is more, so a couple of capture wraps and just work those down. And then one of them, you're going to double it back. So one of these is doubled over. And it's also going to become part of the tail. So now we've got all our tail materials tied in. Peel off a length. Wax up my thread. And now I'm going to take some... Arizona dubbing minnow hair. 
This is uh, their red side, so Arizona dubbing, you can use any dubbing, but I like the re um, their red side because it's not brilliant red, and it has a little red flash into it. So I'm not building a thick, fat body. So I'm not doing a dubbing loop, and I'm not um, getting all carried away. I'm just going to spread this out, get a nice even, but doesn't, I don't want a super thick body. I just want the color more than I'm worried about size. I'm, I'm focused on the color. Get that in, I think it's the right amount. Spin the old mongoose around here. Dubbing. Get it up, several crosses through the eyes. it off. All set and done. Now uh, I rib with the one of the two pieces of copper wire. Run the ribbing down. Get that ribbed off. Trimmed, and we're done with our body. So now the underwing is a uh, chartreuse calf chartreuse calftail. Um, I like calftail over bucktail. This one's a little uh, shorter than I might like, but as I'm on a very remote island, I have to tie with what I've got until the ne the next stuff shows up. So I tie it just about or just past the bend of the hook and then lay it along the eye, loose capture wrap, two, and then start cinching them up. And as I cinch that, it spins around to the top of the hook. Once it's there on the top of the hook, I secure it all down, and that becomes the base of the head of my fly. So now, I think this is truly what makes this fly work, and it's good old red squirrel tail. So this is a um, long-haired, uh, squirrel. Um, I don't know where I got this one. I've got one in here that my dad sent me that, are, that his house cat killed. I've got one in here that I shot on the Muscle Shell River in Montana. And I've got another one in here that's roadkill from uh, Pennsylvania. So not sure where, but now I size this up so that it's just beyond the bend of the hook. Not a lot, but just a little bit. So it's about a half inch beyond the bend. So here I need to make my trim. And I've taken all the short hairs out. So now I've got my material the length I want. And just like I did with the bucktail, loose capture wrap. Now this is hair that is not gonna compress. This hair is slick and you wanna make sure you leave a good base of it. So all the way to the eye. I'm pulling this back with my fingers and adjusting it till where it's just at the eye. And now, I guess with the calf tail, I cinch that down. So you can see it's fairly bulky, and you're going to work to build your head up around it. And this fly does have a bulky head because I use that non compressing, fairly bulky material. But I like the color, the orange of this red squirrel combined with the barring that comes naturally on it. Just make sure I cover up all of my ends. Get everything nice and neat. All put together. Lay down the head. Now I use a uh, solar res, and so I like to put a generous amount, gives it a little shine as well as a finish on the solar res. So once I get it on, I take my bodkin and just work it into all the spots I want to have that solar res covering, make sure that everything is coated, including I run 
some solar res up into the hairs on that outer wing or that upper ring, that fox squirrel, so that it all gets nicely coated. Hit it with the light. Looks like I got a strand there that picked up a dollop. usually take it out of the vise at this point to trim the, the tail copper. I want the copper just shy of the tips of the um, squirrel tail. So I trim the copper and then I just split the rubber legs. I leave them long. If I figure if I think it's too much or too little or too big on the water then I just take my nippers and cut, cut those tails down. But I'd rather leave them long at the bench and trim them on the water. So there you have it. Diego Garcia Jalopy. It's uh, again been a very good fly for me here in Diego Garcia. Uh, don't know what it's going to do around the rest of the world but that has caught a lot of bonefish here in Diego Garcia. Again fishing on the surf side on the outside. Uh, Hopefully this was useful. Uh, again, I'm not doing this uh, professionally. I just wanted to get this unique uh, fly pattern in a unique location um, and see if it works out well for anybody else. All right, thanks a lot.